to some degree, which is necessary to be a champion. Well, he's more of an athlete, and this isn't a game, no. as they say. And with that, Dominic Gwynn has his 22nd victory, his 17th Thank you. knockout. Talking about and it introduces himself to contender status in the heavyweight division. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 21 seconds of round number seven. The winner by knockout victory, his record now, 22 victories, 17 KOs. He is still the undefeated Dominic, the Southern Disaster Gwynn. Hold on, power, Jim. He needs a little more plus. Copy about a round final of numbers, He's and you can now. see a round total punches. Grant, who once threw 542 jabs in a 10-round fight, threw fewer than 40 tonight, landing 51 of 198 punches overall. Gwynn, 58 out of 154, a high connect percentage. He wasn't satisfying Ronnie Shields with the punch output for a while, but he put him in the right places when he landed them and ultimately knocked Grant down four times in the fight and knocked him out. Power punches, win 42 out of 105. The bulk of them short inside left hooks, a punch that Grant simply could not handle. All right. Let's quickly uh, talk with our experts about what happened here. Emmanuel Stewart, a final word on Dominic Gwynn, uh, what he showed you and what his future in the heavyweight division might be. I think Dominic Gwynn has a good future in the heavyweight division, especially when you consider what's up there, and it's not a super strong division, probably outside of Lennox Lewis. I think that Michael Grant, you know, just does not have the mental makeup to be a world champion, a top class uh, athlete. Would you advise him to retire? I would definitely, I would definitely advise Michael Grant to retire. I don't see if he's had over a year or so of fighting soft fights, and he can come back and cannot beat a kid who's just a beginning kid at this stage, and avoid being knocked down about six or seven times. What does he have in the future in boxing? Larry, what about uh, your response to Gwynn's knockout of Grant? Well, Michael Grant had star quality, but he didn't have star ability. And you can't, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall and you never can put him together again. As for Gwynn? Uh, somewhere between a suspect and a prospect. We'll have to see how he deals with a liver, fresher body. All righty. That was the table setter. Main event still to come. The third fight in what has already become one of the most memorable trilogies in the 110-year history of gloved boxing. Irish Mickey Ward, Lowell, Massachusetts. One weapon fighter. That weapon, his searing left hook to the body. He'll try to make it a factor again against Arturo Gatti, who outboxed him here over the course of 10 rounds in their last fight in November. That'll be coming along in just a few moments. Meanwhile, Mark your calendars for these upcoming boxing shows. Thursday, June 19 on HBO Latino. Tune in for the next Oscar De La Hoya Presents Boxeo de Oro featuring Juan Gomez Trinidad. July 12th, it's the welterweight championship rematch between Ricardo Mayorga and Vernon Forrest. Mayorga defeated Forrest with a stunning third round knockout back in January. He vows to do it again and then smoke another celebratory cigarette in the ring. And July 26, an HBO Fistic doubleheader. First, the original boxing movie Undefeated starring John Leguizamo. Then, live boxing with Fernando Vargas taking on Fitz Vanderpool. HBO Boxing for 30 years, building legends one round at a time. And a scenic look at nighttime along the boardwalk in Atlantic City. It was a gray, blustery, rainy day. But tonight, the stars are visible. And a big crowd has filled Boardwalk Hall to get ready for Gaddy Ward 3, one of the most anticipated fights of this year.
Meanwhile, if you're a big fan of boxing and you looked carefully at that promotional calendar we showed you moments ago, you may have noted a glaring absence. You may already be saying to yourself, wait a minute, what about the June 21 fight when Lennox Lewis is going to be defending the heavyweight crown at Staples Center in Los Angeles against Kirk Johnson? Well, the news is within the past 24 hours, Johnson suffered a torn muscle which has knocked him out of the fight. And as a result, Lennox Lewis has left his training camp in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania and has come here to be with us. Champ, first of all, how shocked were you when you got the word about Kirk? I was definitely disappointed, but, you know, you know, I hope Kurt's all right. Obviously, he must have heard uh, that I came to training camp in great shape, and I was looking good in great shape, and, you know, I would have definitely knocked him out in my fight, and I was really prepared for it, looking forward to that fight, but things happen. As of tomorrow, you'll have gone a year without fighting. Uh, it seems, apparently, that there's a chance of putting together another fight for June 21. How eager are you to see that happen? I'm very eager. I've been in training camp for like seven weeks right now, and it, it would be a, a, a big waste to let that go to waste, that date. And, um, you know, whoever they put in, I'll knock out anyway. Well, the number one challenger uh, under the governing body which uh, governs the title belt that you still hold is Vitaly Klitschko. He was scheduled to fight on the undercard that night, June 21, so he's in training. He's ready, too. What about fighting Vitaly? I'm definitely obligated to fight uh, Vitaly Klitschko. I think that'll be a great fight. We're going to have to see what happens. Uh, you know, my team's meeting uh, to, tonight, and we're going to actually figure out what, we can, what, what we're going to do. What can you tell us about the possibilities? I mean, I know that there are negotiations ongoing. Can it happen, Lennox? Oh, yeah, there's definitely a big chance it can happen. You know, uh, I definitely want to uh, fight Vitaly Klitschko. Uh, I'm in good shape. I'm ready to go. I think it'll be a great fight, especially for Los Angeles. They were looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, hopefully, um, you know, if Roy Jones steps up to the plate, he wants to fight Lennox Lewis, and he spoke about it. So we'll have another fight after that. If Klitschko doesn't get involved against you on June 21, are there any other options for that night? There's a couple of different options. Uh, you know, Emmanuel Stewart's over there, and uh, my, uh, my lawyer's uh, at home right now, but we're going to actually uh, speak to him later and we'll, uh, sit around the round table and discuss it and hash it out. You look like you're in great shape. I'd hate to see it go to waste. Yo, I'm ready to go. You know, all I'm right. taking on all comers. All right, Lennox, thanks for coming down. Thank you. Good luck. We'll see you later on. <laughs> Emmanuel, you heard what your man said. Tell us anything that you can tell us to expand upon what Lennox said, and what do you want him to do? Well, we're going to get together tonight after this and start talking about uh, the different options. But it pretty much just comes down to Vitaly Klitschko. I mean, I've always wanted to see him fight Vitaly more so than Kirk Johnson. Uh, we lost one of the Klitschko brothers, so I think it would be challenging for me as a trainer, too, because this is one of the few guys who's taller than Lennox. Vitaly Klitschko is six foot eight, and uh, it would be interesting to see Lennox have to bob and weave and get inside a different guy from the guys he's been fighting. But I think it's a very good possibility that the fight would take place on the 21st. Are you saying that you prefer that he fights Vitaly Klitschko because it's the more significant fight or because you think he's an easier opponent than Kirk Johnson? Well, no, it's a more challenging fight. It's more stimulating, I think, than Kirk Johnson. As I've always wanted to see Lennox fight tall guys. He only got to fight two of them. That was uh, Michael Grant and uh, I think Henry Akawanda, but I would like to see him fight Vitaly Klitschko. It's his number one mandatory. It's an interesting fight. It brings the, the, the top fighters in the heavyweight division in recent years have all been coming from Europe anyway, and it looks like it's going to be for a while. And it would be very interesting to see how Lennox holds up against Vitaly Klitschko. It's a big story because it's the heavyweight championship, so let's get a word from Larry Merchant. What should happen, what will happen? Well, my understanding of the situation is that it may depend on the Staples Center in Los Angeles, which had put up uh, a guarantee for the fight, and maybe they didn't weren't seeing the sales they wanted to have for a uh, Kirk Johnson fight, and now they may be pulling back and deciding that uh, th this is a, uh, a message from heaven for them and they can get out from the whole thing, or they're deciding that since originally they offered a whole lot more, more money for a fight with uh, uh, Klitschko, that they're going to get this one cheaper. Uh, let's hope that uh, they come.